Hello, my loves. My name is Rebecca, and this is my new moon report, Pillars of the Moon. So welcome, everyone. Wow, we are in our eclipse season now. So this new moon is making way for a full moon lunar eclipse, which will be coming up in two weeks. So I've got my eclipse dragons here with me. So powerful powerful portal of time portal of change portal of evolution and soul growth towards our destiny with the help of pluto and uranus who's just gone retrograde as well and so i'm going to be talking a bit about that today and yeah looking at things as they are in the life sky so let's have a look at an overview to begin with um, here we go, sharing the screen with you. So you should be able to see this now. So you can see that the new moon will be happening in Leo. That's the 3rd of the 9th at 2.55 a.m. This is GMT times. So it's literally in a few hours from now. Um, yeah, it's 8 p.m. here now. So it'll be 3 o'clock in the morning, really, or 2.55 in the morning. So pretty soon. Um, yes, and then we have our first quarter moon in a fucus on the 11th of the 9th at 7.05. And the sun moves into Virgo the 16th of September. It's going into the cusp a few days before, so it will be sort of 14th, 15th, 16th, the transition from Leo into Virgo. Really beautiful time of dropping into the harvest mother's energy. Um and then we've got our full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces, which is going to be pretty mega <laughs> on the 18th of the 9th at 3.34 a.m. Shortly after that, on the 22nd, we've got our autumn equinox, um, the time of equal day and equal night, which for those of you in the southern hemisphere, you'll be having your spring equinox. And for those of us in the north, it's our autumn equinox. And then we have our last quarter moon in Gemini on the 24th of the 9th at 1949. And yeah, and then after that, we will have our, our, new, our new moon solar eclipse in Virgo. Can't remember the date of it now, but I've got the chart up here for you. So we'll have a look at that too. So I'm going to stop sharing that screen now and let's go into the live sky and have a look what is happening astronomically. So those of you who've been following this show, this show, this program, this videos, my videos for a while will know that I use astronomical astrology for my readings or my tracking of the sky. Um, I'm just going to change the time here. So this, it says third of the night and I'm just changing it to 2.55 a.m. So we can see this is the constellation of Leo, Leo the lion. And the sun and the moon are together. Beautiful connection as they always come together at the time of the new moon. We've also got Vesta here, the sacred fire asteroid all around our devotion and all that spiritual practices that we're committed to. And Mercury, who's just gone direct after being retrograde. So that's what's happening in Leo. And then Venus, as you can see, is, wow, right in the heart of Virgo. Well, nearly in the heart, just coming into the, let's look at her. And the arm of Virgo, the breast of Virgo, pretty close to her heart, actually. I was quite right. Um, Yeah. And then see what else we've got going on. Whoop. So we're going to have a little look at Uranus here in Taurus. So Uranus has just gone retrograde. I think it was yesterday or the day before his station to go retrograde. And it's going to be going backwards all the way up until, can I remember the date? I think it's the end of January next year. We'll be going all the way back into Aries constellation coming all the way back and journeying over, you know, because it's in such an alignment with our goal at the moment. So there's like a going back over, because it's slow, you know, back to the end of Aries and then moving forward again. And 
you know, at the time that he's going retrograde, he's in an aspect to a trine aspect to Pluto, and also in a trine aspect to the south node, Black Moon Lilith. I think Venus is there as well. We'll look at the chart in a minute. Um, so this is a long, this is a long transit, a long aspect that when I looked at the Uranus going direct chart, that aspect is still there. So there's some great aspect that's happening between um, the nodes, because the eclipse season is all about the lunar nodes, Uranus and Pluto. And Uranus going retrograde until the end of January, and then starting to go forwards again. And then just after that, this is going into next year now. I'm all excited about next year. So next year, um, Neptune will be joining with the North Node the day after um, Uranus goes direct. So I think it was the second of the second or the first of the second next year. So, and then we have our next eclipse season, which is actually in March next year. So these eclipses are like, cycles pack packages <laughs> journeys and actually so from now from this eclipse season that we're going in we're going to have a lunar eclipse on the full moon this cycle a solar eclipse next cycle and then another partial kind of not quite lunar eclipse but there is another mini one at the end so there's a pack of three at uh, this eclipse season and then we're coming into next year and as we're coming into the next eclipse season, you know, we've got Neptune conjoined with the North Node. So this is like, it's a journey about our dreams and our destiny and all the, uh, that purpose and all that we're moving towards. And so when you, this is why I love astrology, because when I look at the bigger cycles, I can see like tuning into this specific eclipse cycle and what we're moving through look at the planets that are helping us and what they are aspecting to Uranus and Pluto with a strong aspect to the south node black moon Lilith and I think Venus is there like I said I'm going to look at the chart in a second but like these planets are really healthy this is like a huge regenerative force constructive change it's like liberating us from the past binds of the south node you know, so it's such a powerful aspect, you know, Uranus and Pluto together with the South Node, it's a real big chance to make huge changes, like to uncover hidden truths from the past, from our South Node. And when I'm tuning into this energy of our goal that's really present, that Uranus is journeying back over, you know, I'm I'm really tuning into the Medusa frequency. You know, we've got our first quarter moon with a Fucus as well, the serpent bearer. Black moon Lilith is conjunct the south node. So there's a real aspect of the dark, of the dark feminine, of the serpent goddess, of all the shadows and the parts of us that have been beheaded, shamed, persecuted locked in a dungeon you know it's like there is an invitation like through this next eclipse portal which isn't just you know the next six weeks or so it's actually taking us to you know next year when we're coming into our uranus going direct neptune and the north node and then another load of eclipses you know which is actually with neptune conjunct the north node it's so much about our dreams and, and pulling us into what it is we really want to create. So it feels like a huge, huge chance and opportunity this cycle and this next period of time. And for those of us who are going into the dark now, so we are in the Northern Hemisphere, we are descending. So the equinox that comes on the 22nd this year it's the time when the light and the dark are the same. So there's the same amount of light as there is as night. <laughs> so, and then it, it, it changes. So then we will start to have more dark 
from then and the nights will get really drawing in then we'll be coming into our Samhain, Halloween, the winter time you know so the autumn equinox is really about the harvest it's about gathering all of the fruits of our labor this is where the Virgo energy comes in you know I think it's so interesting how you know a lot of Virgo has been portrayed as like pure and clean and but I think actually when I think of Virgo I just see like a wise older woman like in with her fingers in the land like harvesting the grains and the vegetables and the herbs and like she's like cuts on her fingers where she's just working so hard to gather everything and, and there is an aspect of like having to work hard you know for those of us who do grow food <laughs> the garden needs tending for the winter so it can rest right so the energy of the descent, it involves a lot of hard work and it involves a lot of endings of things, you know. So when we're harvesting things, we are ending things. We are ending a cycle, you know, we're pulling a plant up and then we're gathering the medicine of it. A fucus, where this first quarter moon is, is all about making medicine. So this cycle, you know, when we've got our new moon in Leo, and then we've got our first quarter moon in a fucus. You know, it's about gathering our creative medicine and taking it into the winter with us. And this is what the wise ones would do. You know, they would gather what they have. And they would gather all that's grown. And it's like taking the seeds, taking the wishes into the womb of the winter with them and gestating them, loving them, tending them on the inner realms before we rebirth in the spring. And in the spring, it's when we have our next eclipse season. It's when we have our North Node joined with Neptune. It's when we have Uranus going direct, you know. So there's a huge lot of energy coming, you know, in March next year, February, March time. That's going to want to wake up these seeds. And I feel like this autumn and winter for those of us who are in the, the Northern Hemisphere, it's about really becoming the architect of our dreams, really taking that vision and those seeds into the dark and starting to be like the spider and weaving, weaving those dreams into creation. And this is how we work with the cycles how we work with the stars and the planetary energies and how it's all working together to help us move towards that which we want to move towards um and those of you who are in the southern hemisphere you know you're coming into spring it's the same but it's it's a different energy so you are starting to wake up your seeds now you know so it's like you in the, in like the autumn and the spring, they're both highly transformative times, you know, for a seed to be born, for a seed to wake up, it has to burst through all those limitations. It has to make its way up through the soil, maybe bump into some rocks and maybe get squished by, by someone standing on it. You know, it's like to be born, to come up into the light, you know, it's, it's like a huge effort, right? <laughs> and so the powerful energy of Uranus and Pluto and the South Node, it's like really helping us to break out of all that has been binding us into the soil that's been trapping us or keeping us locked. And so it's a really powerful energy wherever we are in the world to be harnessing these energies at this time. And so with Uranus going back over our goal, back into Aries, it's really, it feels like a journey of self, a journey to do with our worth and in trying to Pluto, who's over in the last degree of Sagittarius, also retrograde. It's like, it feels like there's a chance to really re return or retrace to like childhood or past life, you know, with the South Node involved, past lives, things that we have experienced in you know, past reincarnations that are subconsciously moving us and the way that we believe 
things you know it's like it's it's an invitation to really journey into those deepest parts of ourselves and yeah like find this way of befriending the beast within you know that that is the work I feel of like Uranus going back over our goal and it's like becoming more whole in ourselves you know when we can do that for ourselves when we can love all of ourselves love all of the parts that are broken love all the parts that are raging love all the parts that are just you know we're, we're too scared to show people that we just pushed down because it wasn't allowed or it was do you know what I mean like all of that shame and all of that wrongness all of those things we weren't allowed to be or you know like it's like waking that up and and welcoming it in and giving it that part of us presence and time and love and that there's so much magic in those parts of us too right that's where all the gold is and we need we need to really we need to work with this energy so that it doesn't work us if you know what I mean it's like if we don't know what's dragging us down if we haven't got if we haven't connected with that, which might be sabotaging us or pulling us back into the dark, it's always going to be tugging on us, you know? Whereas if we have found a way to awaken it and go, hey, like, bring it in, you know, let's 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 see why you're here and journey into that and explore that and love that, you know, that becomes an ally. And that's when we start to ride our dragons rather than our dragons trying to destroy us. So it's... It's a huge like eclipse transmission here around our power, actually. And dragons are our power. It's our life force. It's our kundalini, which is completely what the algo energy is. It's the serpent energy. And, you know, with our first quarter moon in a focus, it's a real kind of journey. This whole eclipse season, you know, into our power, into our shadows into all of that which we haven't allowed ourselves to be and become more whole beings loving all of ourselves and in doing that we are reclaiming our greatest power our dragon you know that's been locked away you see all these stories and hear all these stories about the dragons that are locked in the dungeons and or the the dragons that are buried in the caves or you know that they have and then they have to conquer the dragon and kill the dragon and it's like like that feels like for me like not what I, I I feel like is what's needed actually like the dragons I feel you know hold great power and if we destroy it then we never get to experience that great power for ourselves so learning how to and being courageous to ride that dragon like how do we shift from the fear because it's fear that wants to kill the dragon right because the you see, even Perseus you know Perseus who beheaded Medusa it's the fear of her power the fear of her beauty the fear of her sexuality her eroticism the fear of her shakti you know that is like well no, we can't have that you know boom off with her head and you know it's it's that kind of like fear of that power that blocks that power which means that power can never flow in our river you know we can never get to really fully embody all of that shakti all of that sensuality and and how we can learn like with that energy you know that is going to take us further into our destiny and further into our life force and, and vitality and love than we've ever felt you know so wow yeah it feels like so um like the the energy of the serpent energy and the dragon energy is very strong these next six weeks and so yeah just wanted to talk a little bit into that before I um jump into the chart um okay so bright screen because it's night time here now I have to film this once children are asleep so um yeah gonna have nighttime filmings until they go back to school I think um which is this week um yeah so here we go new moon chart so 
I've got because it's at 22 degrees of Leo and 22 degrees I love the number 22 I know I'm always talking about it aren't I but it's the master architect or the master builder turning dreams into reality energy to pursue our ambitions and dreams and the luck stems from confidence hard work focus intent on building things you know so it's this new moon has a real potential you know like for us to envision, you know, what do we want to build in this life? I feel like with the energy of Saturn being opposite as well, like and that's quite intense and we're all feeling that. That could be bringing like this energy of depression or emotions feeling stagnant or feeling restricted about things. You know, Saturn is still in square to Jupiter. That aspect is still there. Mm -hmm. So, like, not feeling like we could fully, like, expand into all that we want to grow and be. And Saturn opposing this new moon, it could feel, like I said, quite depressive. It could feel kind of like there's a lot that we would like to create you know, but then there's an energy of Saturn. It's, it could feel like triggering energy from authority, triggering energy from some kind of system or like feeling blocked or stagnant to be able to build, to be this architect and this master builder, which Saturn is, you know, it's like there's a journey that we have to go on now. And so with Neptune, we'll be coming together with the north node and their exact conjunction as i say like next year so and saturn will be moving into pisces as well and you know early next year so saturn zero degrees of pisces is actually the day of the total lunar eclipse which is in leo isn't that interesting so the 13th, 14th of March is when we have our total lunar eclipse in Leo. So that's in March. So the lunar eclipse will be in Leo. And at that point, the sun will be moving um, zero degrees of Pisces. Saturn, sorry, will be zero degrees of Pisces. And Uranus would have just gone direct. Uh, no, Uranus goes direct at the end of January, sorry. And then he will be at... Uh, zero degrees of Taurus at that point so beginning of March is going to be lots of big shifts you know Saturn's moving and then Uranus will move back into Taurus you know so it's going to be a big shift coming you know in March next year so what have we got to do between now and then to make some blooming space <laughs> And I've got here with the Pluto energy, right? So Pluto here, last degree of Sagittarius is retrograde. And I'm asking, what do we believe? You know, like Sagittarius could be all about beliefs. It's all about the universe, about cosmic order, expanding beyond all known limits. So Pluto at this point bringing his powerful regenerative force, you know, to end old cycles around what we believe, why we believe what we believe, you know, maybe from when we were younger, you know, or when we was in past incarnations, like we may believe that we're not worthy, you know, because when you think about, uh, Uranus being in Taurus, a lot to do with self-worth. We come down into the other part of the trine, you know, our south node. This is about our karma. This is about our past lives. This is about stuff from the past that is subconsciously working us. So Venus here with Black Moon Lilith, it feels a lot around our value, how we value our how we value our time, how we value our work our service you know and do you know what we're committed to 
So there's this kind of energy here with the black moon, with Venus, with the south node in Juno. It feels like this commitment and this service and like just working really hard, you know. And so when we're thinking about this grand trine aspect, which is a long aspect, you know, this is a journey that we're going on with Uranus and Pluto and the south node. And Venus is here too. Something else that's exciting <laughs> is that when we have our, or oh, is it solar eclipse in Pisces? Um, no. Maybe, yeah, there is a total solar eclipse in Pisces coming up in March. Venus will be over at the North Node. I have got a chart for that somewhere. Let me see. Um, That's Uranus retrograde. So this is Uranus direct. So this is the end of January. You can see that Venus is all the way over by the North Node. I'm not sure where she is by the time that the eclipse has come. But like she's going on a journey between the nodes. So when we're thinking about, so Venus right now, let's go back to today. Venus is here. She's right with the South Node. And by the time that Uranus goes direct, the end of January, she's going to be at the North Node. So the eclipses, you know, it's all about the nodes of the moon, where we've been, where we're going, <laughs> and moving more towards our collective destiny. So these energies are really here to support us. Okay, yeah, they might challenge us as well, but, you know, a trine aspect is a supportive aspect. So it feels like there is a flow of energy that, you know, when we're thinking about Venus now, Venus is going to go all the way, you know, through Libra, um, Scorpio, Fucus, Sagittarius, Capricorn. It's going to go all the way to Pisces. It's going to go to the North Node. So there's a transformation around our hearts, around our love, around our creativity, around our that valuing ourselves and our work and our service, you know. And so by the time we get to next, you know, next year, January, February, March time, Venus is going to be aligning to our destiny. So now is the time to really ask ourselves, you know, do we value ourselves? Do we value our work? Is there things that we're doing that are sabotaging us or holding us back because we are a people pleaser or, you know, or we've always just, you know, done the things that we think we should do because we want to feel worthy, you know, but is it really our soul's essence? 22 degrees of Leo is saying, we can turn our dreams into reality. We can turn our life around. We can bring this energy from the past, from the South Node, and we can really move towards our collective destiny. We could shift the Venusian energy. And when I think about like, oh, it's so beautiful because we are going into the underworld of the winter now. I know Venus isn't in the underworld anymore, but Venus is often thought of as the seed. So when you think about the young feminine aspect, like Virgo being like Demeter, the mother, and Venus is connected to Persephone or her daughter. So Venus going through like, the galactic center and she will meet with Pluto who's also new, known as Hades and then will come up and meet with you know the north node in the spring so the Venus energy is in a way going through a transformation of valuing herself and like I was sharing before around like there's parts of us that we've buried you know it's like using this time through the wintering to really journey into these lost parts of ourselves that are in the soil, to journey with Hades and Persephone into the darker realms of our psyche. And it's like a regenerative regenerative 
powerful time of change, you know, and maybe the way that our life is, is the way that it is because of what we believe or because of how we value ourselves or don't value ourselves. You know, maybe we don't have money because we don't believe we're worthy of that. You know, so there is a whole like re restructuring, recalibrating and innovating ourselves to liberate us from the binds of the past so that we can move more towards our dreams and our visions and use the energy of Venus to really create that in the spring. So I'm really like, I feel like it's such a big journey, you know, this time. And so when we've got our in, sorry, next year, I'm going all the way forward into next year because it's all connected, isn't it? So when we have our total lunar eclipse in Leo and we have Saturn at zero degrees of Pisces, you know, so that, and Uranus at zero degrees of Taurus that is a real new beginning a reset for all the Saturn energy and you know he will be we will be like starting to build be the master architect really turning those dreams into reality Saturn with Neptune is dreams and reality you know building the dreams building the dreams of our destiny you know with the north node neptune and saturn so we are going to become we are being asked to become master architects and first you know with the leo frequency of the beginning of this new moon it's about really connecting to our creative self and all that we want to create in this world and yeah, Mars is also in square to Venus still. So that and is in uh, square to Neptune. So there could be stuff coming up around, you know, our, to do with money, I think, because Mars in Taurus, around the physical stability, feeling, you know, an energy of like, the masculine and feminine still could feel like this energy of conflict that they're working through. And this cycle is all about like journeying into that. It's not about escaping it. And it could feel like this energy of wanting to escape, especially, you know, with the Neptune energy opposing, is it opposing Black Moon Lilith? Yeah. Like that could feel quite, um, yeah, deluding, like there's this wanting to escape from reality because it might feel like they've got, you know, with the Virgo energy in the South Node, like lots of hard work to do. <laughs> so Neptune in Pisces in opposition could be like, let's just escape from all that. Let's just get really high and let's not do any of those things, you know. So there's like this energy, you know, around this time of the new moon that could be causing some tension. <laughs> and Ceres as well and Sagittarius is making the T-square to the node still and that's been quite strong for a while but now with this stellium in Virgo it's quite strong you know and especially with the aspect of Neptune coming closer to the north node so it really is about you know I feel with um, Ceres is all about taking care taking care of our boundaries nurturing and nourishing our boundaries you know and and actually saying no sometimes just to, to, to the hard work that may be like too much you know or maybe the reason why it's a lot of hard work is because we are stuck in those old cycles of the past you know around not valuing ourselves not valuing our time working really hard you know maybe it's not even our true soul essence so you know with this grand trine aspect I keep coming back to that because it really is an energy that wants us to bring change it wants us to break out of these limiting aspects from the past and 
really center on turning our dreams into reality, knowing that's what's coming, you know, in the cycles of the future. Hail to astrology. <laughs> we can see what's coming. Saturn and Neptune together. This is dreams into reality, my friends. So, oh, I feel really excited about this. And at the same time, I know, like, you know, these energies are here to help us, but it's not always easy to integrate the shadows. In one of my children's books that my children read, it's called Day Monkey, Night Monkey. And it's the story about these two monkeys. One monkey lives in the daytime and one monkey's awake at night and how they are learning about each other. And in one of the verses, it was like, our shadows are here to stay or something. I always find that really funny because it's like, you know, if you've got sunshine, it's going to cast a shadow. We're always going to have sunshine. So there is always going to be a shadow for us to witness, see, love, just accept. Yeah, that's a part of me. It's always going to be a shadow. Just like in Peter Pan, he's trying to escape from his shadow and it's always there, you know? It's like, so how can we become more acquainted with that and learn to ride that? And and actually, you know, the shadow is very powerful in all of the ways that we can learn to harness that energy and that power you know, a lot of it could be like sensual energy, Shakti energy that might be blocked, you know, and how we can move that energy and waken our Kundalini and find that we can be more nourished and vibrant through through doing that. Um, okay, so I've just I've just noticed that Mercury is just gone direct in Leo um is in square to uranus he's just gone retrograde it's also in square to Pallas Athena in libra so this feels like kind of an unsettling energy you know around our communications maybe like maybe we really want to say something but our words may feel a little bit scrambled you know or that we might say something we didn't mean to say or that it, something might just pop out and go, oh, I'd said that. Our words could feel quite innovative as well, but there could be a challenge to communicate in a way that is constructive, you know. We may feel quite blah, 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 you know, and uh, Leo, Mercury together, it's like so much like, about the self, about the ego, about the me, 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 all my creative gifts, you know, put them out there in the world. And Uranus might just bring a challenge to that. It might just, there might be like a feeling of like around our physical reality, around us, our our money around our resources around practical things of the earth you know that it could even be like phone reception or messages on the phone that you know that or something isn't working properly the way it's supposed to you know um or like you know with palace Athena here I just realized that as well that we could be trying to be like the peacemaker or trying to create harmony and balance but uranus is just like <laughs> balance <laughs> why would you want to be balanced you know so it's um yeah mercury in the middle of that t-square could be just be like oh, i don't know what to say <laughs> if i say something it upsets that person it rattles that boat and if i don't say anything then that person's upset it could be like trying to sit on be on the fence and not upset anyone you know and not not say the wrong thing so that could be an energy as well coming through um yeah first quarter moon what did i want to say about that i'm not sure i've actually looked into this chart too much so it's just going to be completely organic which is the afukan way isn't it so this first quarter moon is 
just over from the galactic center. No, it's no, it's, yeah, the galactic center is about here. So it's quite close to the galactic center. So the first quarter moon is the energy building. So we've had our new moon. The sun is still in Leo at this point. And the moon has crossed over the south node, Juno, Venus, black moon, Lilith, Halasophina, and is now in a focus. So this is the time of making medicine. This is the time of harvesting those berries, creating elderberry tinctures, you know, getting out there in nature and finding the harvest and making the medicine. Perfect energy for that. So that's on the 11th of the 9th. As well, the moon is opposing Jupiter. So there may be like a tendency to harvest too much. And they were like, oh gosh, I've got all these things here to take care of, <laughs> you know, and then having like, it might make more work for us, you know. Um, and Jupiter is in T-square to the sun and Saturn. Oh yes, look, we've got a grand cross. Wow, okay. So yeah, quite a bit of tension it feels around this time of the first quarter moon. Yeah, and like I was sharing about the stuff with Saturn opposing the sun. You know, it could be a, a tendency to worry or to be like feel really limited in what we could do or restricted, blocked, stagnant. Like we may feel like there's a lot to do with, you know, Jupiter opposing the moon or we may feel a lot of emotions. We may feel like we could take our emotions over the top we could feel like really emotional you know and and even sad you know with Saturn opposing the sun it can bring sadness and so maybe there's a sadness that oh my gosh we're us in the north the summer is over and now we're going into the dark and but for me I get really happy in the winter I just love I I love the nesting part of the winter and the dark and yeah, Sarwain and the winter solstice are like my favourite. Actually, I love all of the turnings, but like just the the sinking down and into the womb of the winter is such a transformative time for me, you know. So, yeah, maybe there is a sadness. The summer's gone, the party's over, let's go home, let's, you know, let's rest. And, oh, what are we going to do for the winter, you know? So that could be, there's like a sadness as well that the, and even for those in the southern hemisphere, you know, like there's a, it's a changing time, you know. So we're changing into the winter, and then the northern hem, southern hemisphere are changing into the summer. So there's like a, a shifting of energies, and it's like, yeah, use these energies really wisely, you know. Use these energies of the Black Moon, Lilith, and Venus, and Juno with the South Node to clear out the old cupboards, clear under the bed, clear out the fridge. Wipe the wipe. <laughs> Use the energy because Pluto, Uranus, and the South Node. It's like clearing away the past. So you know you hear the word spring cleaning. You know you have autumn cleaning as well. There's a lots of moving energy in these times that's enabling us to either come up into the light of the spring or descend into the dark of the winter. But use these energies to help us to create space you know to clear away the old cobwebs to you know clear out the cupboards and then you know in doing that making space use the energy while it's here while it's working with us so we can then you know rebirth again in the new year now i'm not going to go into the full moon lunar eclipse in pisces because i will do a whole other video on that and I'm thinking I might do a little bit of a longer one because I wanted to talk about the next solar eclipse as well and how they're connected and then the lunar eclipse after that. So I will do an eclipse special in two weeks to talk about these energies. Um, yeah, but I'll just show you the last quarter moon in Gemini. Where's that? Uh Yes, it's getting late here. I just yawned, just on cue. <laughs> there you go. And then the next solar eclipse in Pisces here. Sorry, Virgo. 
<laughs> burger, Pisces, Pisces, burger. So yeah, that will be on the 2nd of October. So here we are, eclipse season, my friends. So I'm going to stop sharing that all now. I'm really hoping some of that's useful. Thank you to all the lovely people. I've had some cosmic cycle readings already, and I'm so, so happy to be doing that work. It's so powerful. It's mapping the menstrual cycle with the stars. So yeah, if you're interested in booking in for one of those, just get in touch. It's really powerful work. And I should hopefully have some testimonials to share with you all soon around that too. So there's more bubbling in my cauldron around, around that whole thing. So super looking forward to sharing more of that with you when the time is right. And have a beautiful new moon. Sending you lots of love. Mwah.